privilege and honor to be here at your school. Uh, I've just uh, come from India where I run the Tibetan administration. In this two weeks trip, and I was really looking forward to was a visit to the school because I've never been to Native American schools actually. So as I was uh, sharing with the governors and tribal chiefs that today it looks I'm not in America but I'm addressing Tibetan students because you look very familiar to Tibetan people. So let me begin by saying Tashi Delek, so you can repeat the word Tashi Delek, which means good wishes. Tashi Delek. Tashi Delek. Yeah, some pronunciation is also equally good. <laughs> if you join Tibetan school, I think you'll get high grades, actually. <laughs> First of all, I would like to acknowledge to MCs, you know, who came to a uh, Tibetan community in India and met with Tibetan students. So, uh, you know, when they pronounce my name and talk about Tibetan communities, authenticity, even their pronunciation is quite good. So, which means other students are also invited to come uh, with us and stay with Tibetan families so that you get to learn about our culture, about our civilization, about our history, and then we get to learn also about you and your community and your civilization and culture. Because the stories that we have are very similar. Um, and maybe first I'll begin with my personal story and then come to the topic such as termination, language, uh, culture, and education, which are all um, related. As far as I'm concerned, you know, as I was introduced, His Holiness the Lama and 80,000 Tibetans had to flee Tibet in 1959 because the occupation of Tibet, the country, by People's Republic of China. And it was a communist uh, government and still is a communist government. The colonial mindset and the narrative that they came up with is, again, is quite similar to yours. They said, you know, the term Tungo is for China. Chinese term for China is Tungpo, which means Middle Kingdom. They are the Middle Kingdom of the world. They are the middle of the universe. Hence, people in the periphery are barbarians. So Tibetans were barbarians. And we have to be civilized. So that's the narrative. So Tibetans were backwards. Tibetans were poor. In fact, they made a movie called Nung Nung, Tibetans being slaves. And many Chinese, actually if you talk any Chinese, they believe that Tibetans were actually dark and you know, slave system, feudal system. But actually that movie was shot with Tibetans built to go into the caves with charcoal painted on their faces. They were not dark, they were a civilization, Tibetans were a great civilization on their own. That's the narrative. So we were barbarians, we ought to be civilized. By the way, by that extension, Americans, we all are barbarians, huh? you are not excluded. So that's the narrative. And then they also came in the name of peace and prosperity. By Chinese moving into Tibet, they, they said, we will bring peace and prosperity and we will treat you like family members. And the result is, Tibet is colonized. And all our minerals are exploited even now. Tibet is rich in minerals. 123 different kinds of minerals. The second largest copper mine in China is in Tibet. Uranium, borax, gold, you name it, it's all there. And also Tibet is the roof of the world. All the tallest mountains of the world. Mount Everest is in Tibet. Kanchenjunga is in Tibet. And not just that, Tibet, you know, if I tell you the size of Tibet, if Tibet was an independent country now, it's, it will be the 10th largest country in the world. It's as big as California and Texas combined. Quite big, right? But the population is only 6 million Tibetans. The Chinese word for Tibet is Shizan, which means Western treasure. So Tibet had treasure. That's how the invasion and the colonialism happened. 
Now, as I was mentioning, Tibet is has the tallest mountains, also the ten largest rivers of Asia flow from Tibet. Southwest River, Indus River from Tibet to India to Pakistan. Brahmaputra River, which is the lifeline of Bangladesh, if you read in the news now, there's a lot of flood going on. It's mainly Brahmaputra River. And Mekong River, we all know about Vietnam, Vietnam War, and Mekong Delta. Actually, Mekong and Salwen flow from Tibet to Vietnam, Laos, Cambodia, Thailand. And also, Yangtze River, the biggest dams of the world, it's on Yangtze River in China. Yellow River, the cradle of Chinese civilization, all flow from Tibet. The rivers of Tibet provide fresh water to 1.4 billion people in that part of the world. Unfortunately, in the last 100 years, 40% of the Tibetan glaciers or the snows have melted. Now, Tibet is also called the third pole. After Antarctica and Arctic, Tibet has the third highest reserve of ice. The difference is in the Antarctic and Arctic when they met, it goes to ocean. But the Tibetan mountains, when they met, they form fresh rivers for whole of Asia. And now what's going on is the Chinese are building not just one or two, 10, 20 dams per river so that they can build hydropower to generate money for Chinese companies. Unfortunately, NASA says in the next, by 2100, of the remaining 46,000 glaciers that we have in Tibet, 50%, even 60% will be gone. If that happens, Tibet will become dry. Tibet will become desert. Then 1.4 million people who are depending on water flowing from Tibet will be in a very difficult situation. Already, China has 19% of the world population, but only 12% of fresh water, which means already 400 million or so Chinese are facing water scarcity. Situation in Bangladesh is worse, Pakistan is worse, India is worse. Now, Tibet is the source of fresh water. Now, what would you do if China is facing water scarcity? You might divert rivers of Tibet to China. If that happens, what would all the neighboring countries of Tibet would do? So some scientists have said, some experts have said, before wars were fought over land, nowadays wars are fought over oil. That's where you have crisis in the Middle East. Soon wars will be fought over water. And Tibet is, has the largest reserve of fresh water in the whole world. Hence, Tibet is important not just for 6 million Tibetans, but it's also important for the rest of the world, for Asia, obviously. Even the jet stream over Tibet affects the weather all the way to North America. So hence, it's very important. But Tibet is under Chinese occupation now. Now, one thing that China did, the Communist China did, which is related to the topic, is first thing, after the invasion and occupation of Tibet was they destroyed 98% of monasteries and nunneries. They destroyed 99.9% .9 of monks and nuns. Thereby they were destroying the Tibetan civilization, Tibetan Buddhism. Foundation of Tibetan civilization was destroyed. If that was destroyed, they thought Tibetan culture would be destroyed, Tibetan language would be destroyed, thereby Tibetan identity would be destroyed. So they want to make Tibet into China, Tibet into Chinese. How can you make Tibet into Chinese? You can't wash our face or change our hair. That won't make us Chinese. But by destroying the civilization, by destroying our culture, by destroying our language, if you mandate presently, Chinese language is the medium instruction at the university level, at the high school level, even at middle, middle school level. If Tibetans start speaking only in Chinese, understand only in Chinese, then they become Chinese. If you lose your language, you become Chinese. Hence, on our part, our effort is to preserve our identity. And how we do it? In our schools in exile, from kindergarten to primary school, everything is taught in Tibetan. 
science, math, social studies, everything is brought into bed. Why? Because we want our children to be well versed in our mother tongue. My daughter is studying in Tibetan school. Now she can understand, she can read, write in Tibetan. So now if you want to maintain your identity, you must preserve your language, both written and spoken. It is often said that if you don't have your culture or language in writing, it disappears faster. So having in writing is very important. I know it's a big discourse among the tribal groups, but I won't get into discussion. But why I say this is, we all know about Buddhism. You all heard about Buddha and Buddhism? Now, this is an 